Hey, beautiful souls. Happy Sunday, if you are watching this today. Happy day, whenever you happen to be catching the replay. But if you are, just let me know with the hashtag replay. And I want to welcome you to this really chill Sunday live. I was going to talk about the sacredness of self-care and really go in on all of that. And I'm like, oh, that doesn't feel like today. I want to talk about the productivity paradox that I have completely been plugged into, the, the grid of productivity and capitalism and love doing all of the things and accomplishing things and, you know, like valuing part of my self-worth from doing the things and then seeing the other end of the spectrum and going, oh, I feel so lazy when I'm not doing things. And having this really big disconnect in my humanity. <laughs> and so this has been a huge healing journey for me. Oh my gosh. So I'm coming at you fresh faced out of the shower. Um, my hair is still wet and crunchy. And I am, yes, wearing my bathrobe, even though I'm wearing clothes. Because I just felt like being cozy while I was talking about this. So let me know if you have felt this push, drive, to do the things, to be productive. And if you're not being productive and you're having a day of Netflix and eating popcorn instead of real meals or something like that, you felt guilty. Is that, is that just me? I absolutely am a fiery being who loves to do all the things. I love being social. I love getting things done. There's, I like this visceral thrill of checking something off my to-do list. I love it. But I wasn't always in a healthy relationship with doing because resting felt uncomfortable. Resting felt like it was never fully relaxing. Rest felt bad. <laughs> Rest made me feel like I was not doing what I came here to do. Like there was all this weird capitalist propaganda that was floating around in my head that I was plugged into, you know, maybe you're tied to your productivity, your, your value, your worth, what you can do. And then it was also kind of reactionary. My mom is a Taurus and was really, really, really chill. And she spent less time doing and more time just being. And I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. And I felt like if I slowed down, I would lose all of my momentum and I would like never do anything again. Maybe a misunderstanding of that law of thermodynamics of like, you know, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. Sometimes I just felt like if I stopped, it, I would just never stop, start again. And I would just get stuck. It's like, better keep using the momentum, do all the things. Please let me know if I'm the only one who has felt this way before. <laughs> so we're all programmed with this capitalistic, productive stuff in our subconscious as well as sometimes the conscious mind, right? And, and also just natural proclivity. It feels good to accomplish stuff, doesn't it? It feels good to accomplish things. And also rest. The way that I learned how to do it, or that, that I not learned how to do it, that the way that my mind twisted it from all of these programs and these assumptions that I made was never actually restful <laughs> because I felt guilty the whole time. And then I actually felt worse after like resting and relaxing. And I always felt like I had to finish my to-do list before I could let myself chill. Artist is saying, been there, done that. Yeah, I think it's super, super common. And thank goodness for my husband who would um, share with me when I would be saying, well, I have to finish all my chores and all my work before I can relax. And he was like, why? And I was like, what do you mean why? That's just how you do it. That's how you earn your time to relax. And he'd be like, hmm. Is it though? Like, is, is that true? And it brought to my conscious awareness 
the fact that I was just running a program that somebody else or something else, society, you know, like whatever, had installed in me. That the only time to relax was after your to-do list was done. But I think we all know it's never freaking actually done, right? <sighs> yeah, Patty's saying resting means do nothing. And some of us have issues with that. Um, I'm not an expert and I accidentally scrolled too fast. But I saw the first five seconds of a TikTok today that said there are seven kinds of rest. And I've kind of seen this in the past. And sometimes resting doesn't have to be doing nothing. It could be reading. It could be doing something soul filling, right? It could be doing something um, that could be, you know, active, but it's, it's nourishing as opposed to like work. It could be play or it could literally be doing nothing, right? It could be resting the nervous system, having a nap. Like there's so many different definitions and I, I would love to go back. I'll, I'll probably research after this what the seven kinds of rest actually are. But none of them are very restful. If you, in the back of your mind, are feeling guilty and bad about it because your mind never turns off, right? Laying in bed and resting could be great for your body but if your mind is like oh but I have to do this I have to do this and oh my gosh I'm such a lazy person I should are you actually nourishing yourself through the rest no and I have done that so many times in the past and it's still my go-to default and I have to catch myself like I work usually six days a week but most of them are like only five or six hours a day if that um, and Saturday's a little bit less. And it works for me to have that spread out. Today, it's Sunday. I don't have anywhere to go, anything to do. And I cleaned almost the entire house yesterday. And so I spent a lot of time doing nothing. Bumming around, playing with my kid, doing some art. Like, I didn't get out of my PJs, really, until I had a shower and then put new PJs back on. And still, in the back of my mind, there was the, like, oh, you could have done this, you could have done that. And I have to consciously notice it and go, hmm, is that true? And at least I know now that that is not actually me speaking, right? My soul is like, go ahead you deserve not even deserve but everybody is deserving and everybody's worthy of actually taking some downtime right we all are but there's this little voice in the back of my head that's like mm, everybody else is but you know what you should probably actually get to work because there's always more to be done you need to clean that oh you know you need to organize the um shoe rack there's still shoes that are a size too small from Charlie that she was not going to be able to wear. You haven't organized that. There's always going to be something more to do. So my biggest accomplishment today was not listening to that voice that told me I should be doing something more than what I was, which was chilling. Yeah, I was going to do this live, <laughs> but I'm showing up in my room. <laughs> and this doesn't feel like work to speak with you. What was a huge game changer for me was really noticing what the voices in my head made me feel like when they were speaking. Are they making me feel expansive or like contracted, right? Typically, if it's like my heart, my body's wisdom, my soul, my highest self speaking, it feels relaxing and expansive and I'm like, mm, yeah, that feels good. But if I hear it and I'm like, oh, ooh, and I'm like just feeling worse about myself and shrinking, I'm like, mm, this is probably either my ego or a deeply rooted program from society. And sometimes they're not even mine. It's this weird thing that happens where thoughts just kind of float throughout the ethers and you know we're all very psychic intuitive beings and you can just pick up thoughts that aren't even yours so that's a fun question to ask yourself is this even mine right and sometimes it might be from your neighbor down the street sometimes it might be from somebody that's living across the globe or sometimes it's your grandma's voice in your head right or it could be from a great great grandfather and it's like in your DNA to have these feelings <laughs> and these thoughts 
and it's, it's okay to have them. And it's difficult to completely get rid of all of them because some of them are just so deeply entrenched in us. But we can examine them consciously and not just take them and be like, yeah, this is truth. Not everything thought that you think is going to be true. Isn't that wild? But, but it's true. Your thoughts are not actually truth. They're based upon your belief systems that are creating the thoughts. And our belief systems are something that we're programmed with, but we can actually consciously choose whether or not we accept them as truth. And it could have been truth in the past. And you can be like, hmm, doesn't serve me anymore. I think I'm going to try something new on. So I was so proud of myself that I have created these new neural connections and I no longer um, have these thoughts as my go-to of like, must work, work, work all day before you can play, before you can rest, before you can relax, all of that and all of those guilty feelings. They're, they're still in my brain. Those neural pathways are in there. But I have other ones that I've practiced using, like consciously choosing them that say, you know what? Rest is actually not optional. Rest is essential. Rest is an important part of life. And sometimes you have to do nothing to do everything. And when you let yourself rest, like fully without the guilt, then when you return to the work, you can do it faster. You can do it with more ease. You're more tapped into everything that you need because you're not burnt out and crispy, right? Taking a day or two days off, like there are reasons why we have set these up culturally, the weekends, the Sabbath, right? The holidays, humans need breaks. Tell me if you sometimes think that that's appropriate for everyone else, but somehow you're different. Like somehow you're a machine and you don't need any breaks. <laughs> so <sighs> when I saw this post today on Reddit, where it was like supposed to be a life pro tip, cause yeah, that's what I spent my day doing. What Reddit, TikTok, watching, you know, TV, reading books, playing, making art. When I saw this post that said life pro tip, before you just relax when you get home, just do the things that you need to do first and then they'll be done. And then you don't have to feel bad about not doing them. You don't have to hype yourself up to do them. And I couldn't let that just fly. So I just replied, no, my to-do list is never going to be done. As a mom, as an entrepreneur, as someone who has a house, there is always going to be a to-do list. And if I never let myself rest before the to-do list was done, then I would never get any, right? We require that. And fortunately, there were a lot of people who were also like, this is a shitty life pro tip. And they educated this person who I'm sure was coming from a very amazing heart-centered place going like, wow, you know, maybe they had struggled with procrastination in the past and they realized that for them, it really works well to just knock a few things off the to-do list before they settle down for the evening, right? Because it's a lot easier to get done with the momentum. And maybe that worked from them, but sweeping blanket statements usually don't have the nuance and they don't take everybody's experiences in. And so with this entire productivity paradigm, there's a spectrum and there's different pieces that everybody gets to rewire for themselves. But it's fun to consciously look and go, Am I actually giving myself permission to do the downtime thing or am I needing it? So I'm taking this time, but instead of like nourishing my body and really resting, I'm doom scrolling my Instagram feed and I'm feeling guilty the whole time. So I'm actually not offering myself anything that I need, right? Just disassociating from it. I've done that lots. I've done that, except I don't really watch a lot of Instagram. I am I'm more of a TikTok and Facebook and YouTube and Reddit kind of person if I'm not reading a book. So I guess my point is, did you actually let yourself take the downtime that you needed? And did you feel guilty about it while you were doing that this weekend? Maybe it could be a subversive act where we could be unplugging from this capitalist, productive paradigm that is actually just slowly destroying people from the inside out, right? Where your only productivity is based upon your output and your value. And we have no essential 
essence of worthiness, right? That program is so deeply ingrained in us. And when people are unable to work because of, say, illness or as, you know, a, a new mom or when they retire, then the entire self-worth thing and the identity is, is wrapped up in working and producing. And then there's all of these crazy things that happen mentally when that's removed or God forbid, if somebody is ill or has a, you know, disabling life event, right? So it also applies to us, us people who want to work and want to do things and are able to and able to produce. What if we could still do it for our soul's growth, for our evolution, to take care of ourselves, to work for humanity, to actually um, be building and doing the things that, that nourish us? But we also take that unplug time and feel really good about it <laughs> so that we can actually do what we came to do more effectively, right? Doing the things is not the problem. It's the grid, which is this like information system that is the productivity like grid, like I was saying, of capitalism that, that we can plug into inadvertently and basing our entire, you know, self um, perception upon it that is a problem. The paradox is the harder we work, the more we actually require that time to do nothing. And the rest itself, even though it has no like value in our society, is indeed productive. You're actually producing something when you're resting. You're filling up every little bar inside of you, you know, health, <laughs> rejuvenation, vitality, like creativity, all of that stuff, right? It's like when you're planting a garden or, you know, like a big monoculture seed crop or something like that, you can't just use the soil over and over and over again every season. You have to let them fallow for a little bit, right? For a season or if you are somewhere um, where the growing season's like all year round, there are some beautiful traditions where they would take a month off of planting at two ends of the year, right? Because even the earth requires that rejuvenation time. So who are you to think that you are better than or more superhuman than or um, just like not needing to play by those same rules? <laughs> Because right? that was me. I was like, no, nope. I can just go, 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 go. And, but then I'd fall down, right? And that's when I would get sick, right? The only times I ever get sick are when I'm working too hard, burning the candle at both ends, outputting more than I'm taking in, not filling things up, right? So I just wanted to share my journey with this and how it really took me understanding that there's a paradox of if I actually rest more and take times intentionally to relax and chill and not be working, I actually get more done. It actually helps the productivity, right? And it, again, is taking care of yourself maybe not the most subversive thing that you can do in the, this, you know, like capitalism paradoxical society where all of our values are kind of like tipsy topsy turvy right because being well rested and full of energy and feeling really good about yourself and being in your body instead of being burnt out and crispy you're not going to buy into as many of the oh you just need this and you need this and you need this to like fill the hole inside your heart and you're not going to be as interested or plugged into the the consumer Place in the capitalism grid like I love things but I don't need them when I'm in my alignment and I'm not burned out and I'm actually able to fill myself up energetically with what I need right so let's get real honest with ourselves are we taking enough time for ourselves to deal with what is the most incredibly intense time of our lifetime 
right? There's nothing wrong with you if you feel like you need more rest. Because I will, I will play that too. I'll be like, why am I so tired this week? I don't think I did anything or went anywhere. And I'm like, oh, maybe that's the problem, right? This whole global pandemic thing. And for us, we had like winter. There's other things going on. Like maybe it's okay if you need even more rest because energies are so heightened and we're processing so much. Maybe that's okay. Maybe there's nothing wrong with you. And maybe it's exactly what we need to do. Mm. Yes. Michelle battling the productivity monster today. Thankfully, I just decided to slay it and take it easy. Yes, me too. Now when to stop and chill, Patty says. Yeah, exactly. This is my point at which if I were to keep talking, I would be repeating myself. So I am going to take the rest of the evening to chill and um, also put my daughter to bed which is sometimes more work than what it sounds like. And sometimes I'll go, what is wrong with me? Why am I so tired? It's only nine o'clock. Because you're trying to put a six-year-old who doesn't want to go to bed <laughs> to sleep, and that's exhausting. <laughs> so, you know, give yourself some credit because you might be expending more energy in places that you wouldn't necessarily think, including just your healing and your processing and all of that. So remember, sometimes you have to do nothing to do everything. So let's all give ourselves permission to have a chill rest of the day and night and be cozy. And um, I just am sending you a ton of love. I will be back um, tomorrow, I believe, to do an illumination chat, actually with Nina and Nicole. And I don't know what we'll talk about, but it's going to be juicy and wonderful. So I will see you all tomorrow. Have yourself a beautiful rest of your night. I love you. And we'll talk soon.